Hi, I'm Andy. I'm here with Piers today to take a look at Wizicom's new fabulous MTP61 miniature transmitter. We're going to take a real good close look at the product today. Um, Piers, tell us a little bit about it. Well, it's, as you can see, really, really ultra miniature. Um, really nice rounded corners. So it's uh, really comfortable to wear. Uh, weighs about 90 grams with the battery. Um, it's IP66 rated, which is pretty much waterproof. It, it certainly isn't troubled by rain or jets of water or, or anything. Or sweat. Like, or sweat or uh, anything like that. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, um, standard three pin Nemo connector. Um, turns on really quickly, as you can see. Um, takes about five seconds to boot up to, to RF on. And it's got that fabulous OLED screen on there. I mean, that is so visible under I'd say virtually any kind of light conditions, it, it you know, it's so clear and sharp. And well, yeah, nice. we were out in the sun with it yesterday when we were doing the water yeah, yeah. test video, and no problem seeing it at all. Yeah. Um, just going back to the battery, tell, tell us a bit about the battery. Well, it's a standard um, lithium-ion camera battery available from various suppliers. Um, it uh, has a battery yeah, life of about ten, up to ten hours, really, depending on the power level you're running and whether you're recording and, and, and the type of card you're using. But uh, yeah, we're saying up to about 10 hours, which is which is really good. And uh, RF power options, because obviously different, we're saying 10 hours at, uh, at, at 50 milliwatts, I guess. Uh, no, I think that's, we're probably better at the, in the 10 milliwatt option. Um, okay. we, we've got 10, 20, 50, and 100 milliwatt options in the, uh, in, in the standard UK version. Yeah, and linear mode? Yeah, lin well, linear mode's great because it enables you to uh, have a signal every two or four hundred kilohertz, depending on whether you're running it in wide or narrow band uh, uh, mode. So you can effectively stripe a, a channel every two or four hundred kilohertz, which means you don't have to worry about intermod plans anymore. Yeah, I'm talking about bands, dual band tuning range on this. Yeah, tuning range is uh, un unprecedented, really. It does uh, uh, UHF um, in UK1 mode, it's 470 to 663, and in UK2, it's uh, 510 to 698 megahertz. But on top of that, in, bo in both of those versions, you also get 960 to 1075 megahertz, which is the DME, the DME band. DME band, yeah. But I mean, the DME see... band, very, very useful, isn't it? Yeah, it's very useful, apart from the aerial being really, really a lot shorter. Um, it's, it's a frequency band that uh, has very little use uh, so far. It's, it's licensable in the UK now, very easily licensable as well. Uh, and it's up in the aeronautical band, effectively, and there's very little noise uh, there. You get very little noise from... Uh, screens or, or SDI noise. Yeah, it's, I know. Uh, I know. A lot of tremendous. people said there's really nothing there in DME, and you can go there and. It's like virgin, and go virgin spectrum, want. almost. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I know it's uh, it's saved people um, saved people's skins a few times. It has, uh, yeah, yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as with um, the most modern recorder, most modern recorders, most modern transmitters, it's got a recorder built in. Yes, yes, it has. Um, it's got a, a 32-bit float recorder. Uh, you can set it to 24 if you want, but in 32-bit float mode, obviously you don't need to worry about the gain settings. You've got a 120 plus dB uh, dynamic range there. Uh, and it re can record and transmit at the same time. Um, and it's got a, a, a built-in 64 gigabyte um, a card, which will give you huge amounts of recording time. Um, and uh, uh, as I say, you can record, transmit at the same time, time code, the lot. Yeah. ENS, that's the Compander now. Yes, uh, it uses the uh, the latest Compander developed by Wizicom, which is ENS. That's a very, uh, um, very good, uh, very very uh, transparent Compander. It allows sort of high frequencies, low frequencies, transients. So it's good for speech, singing, music, um, and it has very very few artifacts. So it's a very very clean Compander. It's, yeah, it's nice. the very very latest, way way beyond anything that, that's come before. Yeah, and that ENS Compander as well allows something to happen with um, with IEM, I believe. Yes, yeah. uh, well, that's a good point. Um, ENS is the standard Compander used for Wizicom's IEM systems, which are obviously used for like live sound, for like in-ear monitoring and stuff, uh, or for IFB even. So if you have an MPR50, for instance, a Wizicom receiver, you can now transmit directly to it from uh, from an MTP 61 or indeed an yeah, MTP 60, of course. So that's a battery powered that. IEM solution. It is, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Fabulous, fabulous. Um, the feature list goes on um, time code. It's uh, got a recorder in there, it's got to have time code. It does have time code, yes, and there's several ways to get time code into it. You can, uh, you can jam it in. Uh, also, on the, the four way charger here, um, you can jam four transmitters at a time. 
uh, in, in that charger at the press of a button. Um, or, it, very exciting, you can, you can jam it directly from uh, a timecode device via Bluetooth. At the moment, uh, they, uh, Tentacle is supported, so you can yep. uh, put, put the transmitter into Tentacle mode and uh, basically pick up, pick up timecode directly from your Tentacle. And it does do it instantly, does it? It's one yeah. press and so, all in So it. simple. I mean, do, perhaps yeah. we ought to just discuss about the charger a little bit because it's, it's not just a battery charger. Um, first of all, you can see that you've got the, 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 the four devices can be put in there um, using that lovely little sexy mag connector. Um, and then you've got four batteries in the front there as well. So you've got one on charge, one in use, or you've got eight batteries being charged at the same time on the, over the four devices. And you've, you've got a network connector as well, um, and a USB connector, which you can connect to uh, manager. Also, if you, if you connect um, the USB, it, it immediately brings the transmitters uh, record, uh, recording folders up on the computer. Uh, so you'll get four folders will come up with the names of the transmitters already in there. Yeah, so I mean, that's, can... that, that's something that people have been talking about, the workflow of getting the data from these. Um, this is the machine, you know, the device that allows the data to be transferred. And it really does look nice yeah. when you plug it on screen. You just get, bang, four folders, <laughs> and you can see exactly what's gone into those folders. And I think a full card, which is, is a ridiculous amount of recording time, uh, it's something like, how many hours was it? It was almost like two days of recording. Yeah. Um, could be transferred in 15 minutes, and that's that's the maximum. So, you know, it does it fairly quickly. Yeah, that's nice. Um, Bluetooth, that's another, another yes, good point. We've got, got, we've got an app, haven't we? Uh, well, yes, the, the, the Bluetooth antenna is underneath this uh, power board, <laughs> I suppose you could call it, on the top. It's a Bluetooth 5.2 long range and it's high power as well, which means if you're, if you're linking it up with, a, say, an MRK16, the multi-way rack for the MCR54 uh, quad receiver that Wizicom do, um, that has a high, also has a high power uh, Bluetooth feature. You can control these over hundreds of meters. Uh, you can also control it from a, um, a tablet or a mobile phone. You can use it for the firmware update. Um, and, of course, as I said, for, for time code sync, it all happens via this... Uh, Bluetooth 5.2. Yeah, superb. And I mentioned the app. Um, let's go over to Jilly now, and she'll show you some of the finer points of the app, because it is a nice looking thing. It's becoming more comprehensive, and there's going to be more features, of course, coming in as the app develops over time, but it's already pretty good. Jilly, uh, tell us about the app. Thanks, Andy. Jilly here to walk you through the Bluetooth app. Got the MTP61 here already paired up and ready to go, so I am just going to pop it down there. On the app itself, we've got a quick access bar down the bottom. Simply on and off, record, mute. Then we've got more feature rich up the top here. We've got the RF section in purple, although I can change my name on the RF section, so that's Jilly. We've got the groups and channels. And then we've got Companda. This is a quick overview, so I'm not going to go through all the features. We've got the frame rate. Again, scroll and select. And then we've got the audio, so you can simply choose your mic mode there. More features to come on the app, and obviously there's lots more detail in there. But for now, back to the studio. Thanks, Judy. That's, that's really interesting. Looking forward to seeing what other features come in on that app. But, uh, you know, I'm sure they're coming. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about other features on the MTP61. Uh, dynamic range, dynamic audio range. Well, yes, the dynamic range is, is very wide thanks to um, the latest DSP uh, used for the ENS Compander in here. Um, you can get a dynamic range of uh, up to about 121 dB, which pretty much covers everything from the, the tiniest whisper to a, a screaming Formula One car engine. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty good. Ultrasonic, talking about... Um Sound out of the uh, out of the normal hearing range. Yeah, well, the the, uh, the the audio input has an ultrasonic filter, which is important uh, if you're working around um, like ultrasonic focus pullers, which send a very high frequency audio signal, bounce it off the subject, and then determines the distance and focus. That that created a lot of problems with some transmitters uh, and completely it messed up the audio. Um, but this has a built-in ultrasonic filter to, to prevent anything outside the audible spectrum. Superb, and I think since that's been deployed, I, you know, we haven't had any instances of, uh, of, of problems with that, so that seems to work really, really well. Just an interesting thing here, it uses uh, this fabulous little 
mag connector for you know if you want to just do a single USB connection on, on one unit uh, I guess for either for, for charging or for data transfer um, the connector I love this it's got a, a very special little mag connector that if you put it on the wrong way it doesn't like it and you put it on the right way it grabs it straight away that's actually going to amuse me for hours but that's uh, that comes with the uh, with the product and you get, get to a USB A uh, so you can plug it straight yeah, in. Yeah, straight in. And you get uh, two batteries with it, I think, as well. And obviously the uh, the relevant antennas, all in a nice little WYSIWYGON pouch. Controlling the uh, controlling the units, obviously these are compatible with the WYSIWYGON manager. And I think we ought to take a closer look at that and understand uh, the, the features that are available on manager with the MTP61 now. So um, let's, let's nip over now to, to Matt, who I think is in our, in our technical area. And he's, uh, he's become the resident uh, WYSICOM manager expert. So let him take us, uh, let's let him take us through the, uh, the finer points of WYSICOM manager with the MTP61. Thanks, Andy, and welcome to the Raycon workshop. Let's have a look at the WYSICOM manager software. Obviously, with one end connected to the computer already, simply take your MTP61, attach the magnetic connector to the bottom, and you'll get a pop up on the computer like this. First thing, let's get rid of this. Then we need to move the MTP61 up to the top window, at which point we can then access the settings. The first part of the menu has your RF settings, frequency and power output. If you click on the little arrow by RF, this will bring up your power profiles. This screen has all your frequency bands and what milliwattage each band can go to. Next, we have audio settings. Here you can change all the mic gain, high pass filters, whether it's wideband or narrowband, and phase and things like that. After that, we have the settings menu. Here you can turn the Bluetooth on or off. You have battery uh, readouts, LED settings, and display settings. And then last of all, we have the information which gives you serial numbers, frequency bands, firmware, and hardware versions. So that's a quick run through of the WYSICOM manager software. Back to Pierce and Andy in the studio. Oh, thanks, Matt. That's really interesting. Uh, the WYSICOM manager, a key part of the WYSICOM infrastructure, of course. And I'm sure there's going to be a load of other features that will be coming in with the, uh, with the manager in time. So, um, there we go. That's the MTP61 from WYSICOM. What a lovely little product. And it is really Tiny. a little product. Um, Piers, thanks very much for taking us through this. Um, obviously, if you've got any questions, we're here, as always, to help you with any, uh, any other queries you might have. Um, but in the meantime, be, be proud, proud of, of your sound. sound.